He was waiting for me as soon as I stepped off high school property. Think you're better than me, don't you, Professor, eh? Rob said, his acne-scarred face flushed as red as his flaming red hair. I, I don't have any quarrel with you, Rob, I answered as calmly as I could, trying not to panic. Think you're better than everyone else, eh? Talking you like you was friggin' Shakespeare, eh? He yelled in my face. Look, I, I don't think I'm... I started to say when Rob punched me in the mouth. I should have been expecting it, but it still knocked me back on my heels, while Rob's next punch knocked me to the ground as it knocked off my glasses. My books and papers scattered across the pavement to be kicked and stomped on by the crowd which had gathered to watch the fight. Not that it was much of a fight, at least not on my part. Get him! Get the professor! Kick his ass, they howled. They called me Shakespeare, Four Eyes, and a whole dictionary of filthy names. Every time I tried to get up to try and fight back, Rob punched me in the face. All I could see was stars, an entire constellation. Finally, Rob kicked me in the stomach, knocking the wind out of me, and I just lay there, gasping for air and weeping while my classmates showered me with spit. That'll teach you to be smart, Rob crowed, giving me a final kick in the shins before walking off in triumph, the hero of the hour. No one stayed around to help me. Eventually I got up, gathered up what was left of my homework, and walked slowly home. Slowly home, beaten, humiliated, and worried. I had to spend the next four years with these bastards, and they weren't going to leave me in peace. I cleaned myself up in a filling station washroom. If Mom saw me the way I was, she would have insisted, she would have insisted in calling the cops and charging Rob which would have made things worse. There was a rule back in high school. You didn't rat people out. Ever. I opened the washroom door to find Milo waiting for me. Without waiting for me to speak, he said, I'm ashamed of you, man. I, I told those guys you'd fight, and you didn't even try. You didn't even try to fight back. What a wimp. Milo's words hurt worse than the beating. Worse than the beating, and and damn it all. Damn it all, I, I started to cry again. I woke up. I was lying in bed in a darkened bedroom. I looked at my watch. 1.13 a.m. The bedroom door softly opened and the black silhouette of a person stood in the doorway. Who are you, I said, to which the shadow replied, A friend. And then they shut the door. I had just punched into work when the boss came up to me and said, I'm laying you off. Uh, of course. Of course I knew why. The boss's son and I had gotten into a tussle over a girl the night before. And I won. I had come a long way from the days when guys like Rob or anyone else could terrorize me. I have to give the boss some credit. He didn't try to bullshit me. You know why. We don't want you around after today. The boss shook his head in disgust and added, After all we did for you too. Collect your pay at quitting time and go.
If I'm getting fired, I'll take my money and go now, I said angrily. His son was the one who started the fight. He shouldn't have gone running to Daddy, the wimp. Leave now and forget getting paid, period, the boss sneered. You can't do that to me, I protested. McNeely, the foreman, a real bootlicker, had joined the conversation. Uh, yes, he can, he said, no doubt hoping to score some brownie points with the boss. I needed the money, so they had me. I won't forget you guys, I said through gritted teeth. Is that a threat? McNeely said. But before I could answer, the boss slapped me across the face. Hard! I raised my hands to strike back, but the boss stopped me by saying, Go ahead. Hit me. McNeely here will tell the cops, You hit me first, and they'll arrest you. They'll believe us over a punk like you. That's right, McNeely added. The cops don't like trash either. Now, get to work. They had me. There was nothing I could do but walk away. And as I did, I heard them laughing behind me. I won't forget you guys, I said to myself. I'll never forget you. Ever. I woke up. I was lying in bed in a darkened bedroom. I looked at my watch. 1.13 a.m. The bedroom door softly opened, and the black silhouette of a person stood in the doorway. Who are you? I said, to which the shadow replied, I'm here to watch over you. And then they shut the door. I had received a tip that my wife was meeting him, him, at a recreation area just outside of town. Her car was parked at one end of the parking lot, while his truck, a black Dodge Ram, was parked at the other end. They, uh, didn't see me come up. They were, uh, busily engaged. I got all the action on my phone. All of it. I rapped on the glass, and when she looked up, I said, For better or worse, huh? Wait, I can explain, she cried. I think I got the picture, I said, walking away. Of course, he, he had to get out of the truck. He was a big burly dude with shaggy hair and tats and that ineffable whiff of the trailer park. It's bad enough to have your wife cheat on you, but with someone like that? Hey, he yelled after me. You're butt naked, I yelled back over my shoulder as I went back to the car and drove away from my marriage. I woke up. I was lying in bed in a darkened bedroom. I looked at my watch, 1.13 a.m. The bedroom door softly opened, and the black silhouette of a person stood in the doorway. Who are you? I said, to which the shadow replied, I'm your guardian angel. You look more like a shadow person to me, I said. I am indeed a shadow. Your shadow. My shadow, I scoffed. What the hell is this place?
It is indeed hell. The hell that lives inside your mind. The hell you carry around with you. The hell of memory. Evil memory. The hell that you can never leave because you've chosen not to leave it, but to revisit it over and over and over again. The hell you will not let go of. The hell of the past. Good night. And with that, the shadow, my shadow, gently closed the door, leaving me alone with my thoughts in darkness and leaving me in hell. The moral of the story? Does hell really exist? Or is it all in the mind? Warren here. I'd like to take this opportunity to forgive all those who have ever harmed or offended me and to ask their forgiveness in return. Mind you, if I ever did anything to you, it's because you started it. But in the elevated spirit of forgiveness, I'll overlook your stupidity and obnoxiousness. Don't you feel better already? If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs in 2022. Till midnight. Cheers! Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here. That's PX here, while the music was Aftermath by that patron of the internet. Kevin McLeod.